Today, I'm building a Dolby Atmos 7.1.4 setup in my home studio, and I'm taking you through every step from audio interface, settings, speaker placement, calibration, opening Atmos sessions in Logic, and reacting to my first listen to a proper 7.1.4 surround sound setup. The term 714 means seven speakers surround you at ear level, four speakers point down from above, and one subwoofer for low frequency energy. Most of the gear in my setup is from the immersive bundle at guitarcenter.com, which gets you a package deal on 11 IK Multimedia iLoud MTM monitors and the Apogee Symphony Studio 8x16 audio interface. This is an interface made specifically for Dolby Ammo setups, and we'll get into it in just a second. Next, I add a subwoofer, which I already had here at the studio, plus a few stands and cables that I purchased, which I'll share all the details about. I wanna build my Dolby Atmos setup in a way that puts zero holes in my walls or ceiling and requires only two tools, a tape measure and a screwdriver. This is gonna be the easiest and quickest way to get up and running in Dolby Atmos in any home studio. And if you wanna skip straight to the build, I've added timestamps below for you to go to any part that you're interested in seeing. But first, let's take a closer look at the audio interface and speakers in the immersive bundle. The Apogee Symphony Studio is the centerpiece of our entire Dolby Atmos setup. It was specifically designed to meet the needs of surround sound studios. And as you could see on the back, you have eight analog inputs for microphones or line level signals and two eight channel multi output ports for a total of 16 analog outputs. This format is called D-Sub, and you convert these to usable XLR outputs with breakout cables like this Livewire Advantage 8-channel snake. And finally, we have the power inputs and USB-C, and that's all the inputs and outputs on the back of the Apogee Symphony Studio. So moving back to the front of the unit, we have all of our input control buttons here on the left, plus some handy level displays for surround sound output or stereo monitoring. In the middle, we have what I call the everything knob, which is basically assignable with whatever button you press. And to the right, we have four more buttons to control your outputs. This interface is compatible with both quarter inch and eighth inch headphone jacks, which is kind of unique and convenient. Plus the overall bright purple vibe just adds that nice pop of color that stands out in the studio desk. The build quality is really solid and heavy duty, and most importantly of all, the sound quality is transparent and pristine. Apogee has always been known for their top quality A to D conversion, and the sound quality here in the Symphony Studio is insanely clear for both recording and mixing, just as you'd expect from any Apogee product. First, I spent a couple weeks just using this as a regular stereo audio interface to familiarize myself with the app and workflow. The included app is called Apogee Control 2, and I was really impressed by how many useful features they packed into the software. Of course, it covers all the basic routing, levels, mute, solo, and microphone controls, but Apogee takes it a step further with built-in DSP to process your inputs using their Apogee Channel Strip plugin for compression and EQ. These effects can be assigned to your headphone mix only, or you can print your EQ and compression into your DAW when you record. And of course, this avoids all of the buffer size related latency or CPU overload that might be going on in your DAW because the processing for this plugin is in the audio interface. Unfortunately, there is no reverb, delay, or tuning plugin. So this DSP is literally just compression and EQ using this one channel strip plugin. But compression and EQ is still super useful, especially if you're just plugging a mic straight into the interface. Another favorite feature of mine in this app is how you can easily switch between stereo monitoring, surround sound, or even check your mix in mono. You can go crazy with surround sound formats all the way up to 9.1.6, or take checking your mix in mono to the next level with a variety of ways to use your center speaker to emulate things like mix cubes, mobile devices, or popular mono monitoring setups. Plus this app also features a wide range of calibration features, bass management, and room correction EQ curves so that you can have the most transparent listening experience possible. We're gonna dive deeper into the Apogee Control 2 app later once everything is set up, but overall, this audio interface is a beast for Dolby Atmos and stereo work or anything that you throw at it. So that's our audio interface. Next, let's dive deeper into the speakers included in Guitar Center's immersive bundle. These are the IK Multimedia iLoud MTM Mark IIs. It's a compact but very heavy duty sounding speaker that produces surprisingly good amounts of low end for its size. Their three and a half inch midwoofer tweeter midwoofer design minimizes vertical dispersion for more consistent imaging in any acoustic space. The quality right out of the box is already really transparent, but if you wanna calibrate them to your room, they have built-in ARC technology 
right inside the speaker. You literally connect the measurement mic right to the back of the speaker and calibrate. But back to the design, these are intended to be used either vertically or horizontally, and they include dedicated stands for either orientation. When they're mounted horizontally, they point straight forward, and when they're mounted vertically, you can tilt them at any angle using the included adjustable speaker foot. But here on the back is where all the magic really happens. We have buttons to choose your settings for low frequency extension, low frequency reduction, high frequency boosting or reducing, speaker calibration settings, and input sensitivity. Below that, we have our main output volume knob and a combo jack audio input, plus the microphone eighth inch input for you to connect your ARC measurement microphone. And they give you an adapter for XLR to eighth inch so it's easy to plug in. You can literally calibrate your speaker from start to finish without ever connecting it to a computer. But when you first open up the speakers, I always recommend just USB them to your computer just for long enough to update the firmware. And then from there, you could do everything without USB. And my favorite feature in these speakers, aside from the sound quality, is the mounting options. Here in the bottom, we have two 5 8 inch screw threads that easily attach to stands, wall mounts, ceilings, or adjustable arms. And if you want to hear them in action, I'm going to include a listening example after we finish setting up our Dolby Atmos Studio. So let's go ahead and clear out the room and set up our gear. Here's the official list of everything we need to complete this 7.1.4 setup. The immersive bundle includes the Symphony Studio interface and 11 iLoud speakers, but the stands and cables and adapters are all sold separately. Instead of traditional speaker stands, I went with lighting stands for four different reasons. One, they're cheaper. Two, they're smaller and lighter. Three, they hold plenty of weight and adjust. And four, I already owned a bunch of them here at the studio. The seven speakers that sit at ear level fit on any basic lighting stands that you can find on Amazon, like these. Then be sure to also get seven or eight of these screw thread size adapters to ensure they fit on the larger 5 8 inch thread size that you have here on the iLoud speakers. For the four overhead speakers, I use these heavy duty C stands, which are again designed for lighting, but happen to fit perfectly on the iLoud speakers without any adapters. My subwoofer on the floor is the Personas Aris 10 that I already had laying around the studio. This is definitely an excellent subwoofer recommendation if you're on a budget. And that's all of the speakers, stands, and accessories that we need. Next, let's talk about cables. I recommend getting six 25 foot XLR cables to connect all the speakers from the back and the sides to your audio interface at the front of the desk. Plus seven 10 foot XLR cables for your front speakers and that extra 13th one is for your measurement mic. Next, we need about seven extension cords and power strips so every speaker can reach an outlet. Plus I also got four 10 foot universal power cables so my overhead speakers had enough cable length to reach all the way down to the floor. Last, you'll need those D-sub adapter cables that I mentioned earlier, the Livewire Advantage 8-channel snake, which adds an extra five feet to your cable length. And it also helps convert all the outputs here on the back of the Symphony to more usable XLR male outputs, which is perfect to connect to our iLoud speakers. So all together, your supplies and gear should look something like this. A. Hey. So let's start building our Dolby Atmos Studio. The first thing I did was use my screwdriver to mount the Apogee Symphony in my desk. Then pull my desk away from the wall so there's enough space for all the speakers to be equidistant. Having all your speakers the same distance isn't necessary, but it definitely simplifies the calibration process later. Next, let's place our four C stands as corner stands that would hold our overhead speakers. A quick tip, don't raise these up yet. We need to keep these down at a height that's still easy to reach. Next, let's place our seven smaller stands, which hold all the speakers at ear level. Two in the back, two on the sides, and three across the front. Now let's do the fun part and attach all 11 of our iLoud MTM Mark II monitors to our stands. Altogether, the setup should look something like this. Don't forget the laptop on the desk. Next, add a power cable to each monitor. Place your subwoofer anywhere beside your center speaker stand. Next, add those XLR cables to each speaker. I wait to actually connect the other ends of the cables and tidy everything up until I've fully raised the stands to their final listening height, which is in the next step. But first, we want to grab a tape measure, sit in our computer chair, and measure how high our ear is off the ground. Then remember that measurement because that's about how high you want the seven main speakers around you. Specifically, the tweeter of the speaker is what you want to match your ear level. Next, multiply that number by two 
and that's about how high you want the four overhead speakers. C stands make it really easy to achieve the perfect height and listening angle, and they hold these speakers really sturdy. All our speakers are set up, but nothing is connected yet, so let's climb under the desk and attach our adapter cables to our Symphony Studio interface. So the next step is really important because we're gonna connect all 12 speakers to their corresponding outputs on the interface. You really don't wanna mess this part up, so I'll take it nice and slow. Output number one is your front left speaker. Output number two is your front right speaker. Three is your front center speaker. Four goes to your subwoofer. Five is your left side speaker. Six is your right side speaker. Seven is your left rear speaker. Eight is your right rear speaker. Nine is your left top front speaker. 10 is your right top front speaker. 11 is your left top rear speaker and 12 is your left top right speaker. The last thing we need to do is run some basic power extension cords and turn everything on. Then raise your four overhead speakers to their final height. It's important not to make the mistake I did where you raise them up and then realize they're still switched off. So make sure you turn them on before you raise them up over your head. Now your setup is completely built, wired up, powered on. Next, let's dive into the Apogee Control 2 app again to complete our setup steps. The first thing we want to do in the Apogee Control 2 app to set up our speakers is click the analog output setup. Then we want to make sure the speaker button is enabled for the first 12 analog outputs like this. And the last four can be line level for whatever else we want. And that's all we need in this menu, so let's click back on our main page. Next, let's check monitor workflows. By default, they assume you're starting with stereo, but today we're building 7.1.4. So I'm going to click that right here. And all of our speakers light up, which indicates you're ready to go. This window is also where you can mute or solo any speaker in your setup, which we'll check out in a second, or quickly switch between a different listening format like mono, stereo, or any other type of surround sound. And these options are also available as shortcuts on the main page here in the bottom right corner where you can easily switch between any monitoring setup in a single click. Super convenient. And just above that, you have some shortcuts to control your headphone output volumes. This is one of those interface apps that's so good that I probably control things from the app more than I actually touch buttons on the interface. So that's our entire setup from start to finish. We just converted our home studio into a 7.1.4 Dolby Atmos workstation. Just like many of you, I've never had access to a proper setup like this before. So what I wanna do is take my very first listen together and share my thoughts on camera. You're just gonna be hearing the bleed from my mic, but I'll do my best to describe exactly what I'm hearing. Logic is one of the easiest DAWs for working in Dolby Atmos, and if you're a beginner like me, you'll appreciate having a professionally produced and mixed demo session built right into your DAW. This beat was produced for Apple by Take A Day Trip, and I'm gonna use it as my demo audio today. Simply open the mixer and scroll over to your master channel. Open the plugin called Dolby Atmos, choose 7.1.4 from the monitoring format menu, and you're ready to go. But what if you have a stereo session that you wanna to convert to Dolby Atmos? Simply go to the mix menu at the top, click Dolby Atmos, choose your preferred sample rate, and choose Dolby Atmos in spatial audio. Then for your surround sound format, I choose 7.1. So press the letter X, scroll all the way over to the end, click Atmos, and make sure 714 is selected. Time to blast off into the Dolby atmosphere. Let's go. Whoa. This is wide. Oh. Hang on a second. I can hear some instruments coming from up above behind my head. There's little synth layers that are like swirling around me. This is really cool. It's not directly in your face because the speakers are a little further away than I'm used to, but the width is just unreal. You just don't get this amount of width in a stereo mix. Yeah. I could get used to this. Wow.
This is a really cool way to experience music, especially electronic production and things that naturally have a lot of panning and automation to begin with. I really feel like the beat is taking place around me instead of in front of me. Hey. Woo. The bass feels pumping and the drums are right in your face but all the other instruments are like this world around you. So what did I think of my first listen in Dolby Atmos? Wow, this sounds way wider than anything I've ever heard before. The soundstage felt so big, it had me looking around the room just to hear different details in the music production. The floating dots in the Atmos plugin here in Logic really are a great visual to accurately reflect what you're experiencing in your studio. Things feel so much more alive and moving instead of being completely fixed in front of you. I can definitely see myself getting immersed in this for hours on end, which is exactly what I plan to do because as I learn some cool things about mixing in Dolby Atmos, I'll be sharing it with you here on my YouTube channel. So there you have my complete home studio Dolby Atmos build the easy way. The immersive bundle at Guitar Center really does get you almost all the way there with the most important parts of your system, which is of course the speakers and the audio interface. If you want to check out links to the stands, cables, or any of the accessories that I use in this setup, I'll put everything down in the description below and catch you guys next time in the Dolby Atmosphere.